a city of laughter, memories, and people who will welcome others in with a cup of heartwarming handmade coffee. A city of people, young and old, working together. People who explore, live, and grow together. But what makes this place special? Being listed year after year as one of the best places to raise a family. Maybe because we have a community recognized for its safe neighborhoods and revered for its low unemployment. A city where adventure is everywhere you look, where you can pioneer your own story. We've opened a new page to write on for the generations ahead. Welcome to Bismarck. Come write your story. There we go. Welcome, everybody, to One Million Cups. Happy Wednesday. Uh, my name is Lake and Ani, for those of you who don't know, and I am the advocacy director at the North Dakota Women's Business Center. I'll be your MC today and happy to walk you through um, a few of our housekeeping slides before we get started. But before we do that, we all celebrated our nation's birthday over the 4th. Show of hands, make sure you all have your digits. Yes? Good? Great. Uh, thanks for coming back safe and sound. Let's get into, wow, we skipped a whole bunch. Oh, you did. Janya doesn't follow the rules, everyone. So here we are. Um, National French Friday. I don't know how many of you have seen the campaign uh, around town for Marlo to change uh, Friday, but if you haven't, you should check it out. Um, which is today, right? It's today, great. Great, thanks, Shania. So it, we don't have a lot of expenses with One Million Cups, but we do rely on some folks for volunteer hours and um, some monetary uh, donations to keep the lights on here. So if you see these folks, thank them. Um, we're grateful for their support. How many newbies we have? Anybody? A couple? Welcome. Good job. Thank you for being here. So One Million Cups is a free weekly program. We do it every Wednesday morning right here uh, at Dakota Stage. Occasionally we go rogue and have maybe a breakfast off-site or other networking opportunities, but typically you'll find us 9 a.m. right here at Dakota Stage. And this is an opportunity for businesses, uh, nonprofits, other local entities to pitch their ideas, uh, talk about what they're doing within the community, and gives you the opportunity to ask them questions to help them grow their business. The big takeaway, so we are a local um, arm of a national organization called the Kauffman Foundation, and the question that we're asking across the country is, can we change the face of the startup community by connecting local entrepreneurs over a million cups of coffee? And we're highly caffeinated and um, well on our way. At the end of the presentation today, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions. So depending on how long-winded these gentlemen are, um, we'll have about 20 minutes or so to pick their brains uh, to learn more about their business. If you are comfortable, we'll have this giant yellow mug that you can use to ask your question, or you can tweet us at hashtag 1MCND on Twitter, um, and we'll ask the question for you. You can also drop it in the chat if you're watching uh, on Facebook online. Okay, and I know we have a few community announcements, so if this is you, come on down. That's it, no, oh. All right, this is the, the reminder that if you've not done Yonder, it's a lot of fun, and your next opportunity to do this is part of Bismarck's 150th celebration, I can't say that Sasquatch word, so, um, is happening at the Heritage River Landing on July 16th, so that is like in just a couple of days. So get on down there, it is a lot of fun. Um, just bring your uh, smartphone and play along, and it's, uh, it's really, really cool. Also, I'm this person too, sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry, and then this is uh, early bird pricing on this one ends July 15th So we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but this is that hands-on entrepreneur experience very cool event happening um, so if you're 
um, if you've got a relatively new business or there's things that you want to learn, this is going to be a great learning experience. And again, you've got by J July 15th to get the early brew pricing. No, this one's Marlowe. But I did stick. But I did stick it in there and did tell him about it this morning. I, I can do that. This franchise scandal. I thought I'd come here so I could be in a French fry free zone, but I guess that's not possible. So anyway, so the news is out. We did change French Friday to land on a Friday. So if you're all wondering, you know this, you can sleep now. I actually had people this morning that were actually, you know, telling me they didn't sleep last night, wondering what was going to go on with all this. But part of the deal with checkers and, and uh, uh, rallies is that if we participated in this, that they would bring their Fry Love Express to Bismarck and Mandan. So there's this 65-foot French fry frying machine that will be showing up in Mandan on the 27th. It just happens to coincide with National Chili Dog Day. So we're going to put together the Great American Chili Dog and French Fry Festival. All free. Come have some chili dogs. Come have some Checkers French fries. Watch this amazing 65-foot robotic machine working. So this thing makes 300 orders of French fries an hour. So come on down and check it out. Eat free on us. And, and uh, I don't know what else to say about it. You're kind of the first people we're talking to about this. So... Uh, but come on out. Have a good time. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, they just finished renovations on Dykeshorn Park. I'm not really sure where they're going to park a 65-foot French fry trailer, but you'll have to go there and check it out for yourself. Okay, so without further ado, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker today, speakers today. Uh, with us, we have Cameron Fleck and... Um, Mike Weisbeck, they're joining us from New Vision Security. Fun fact, uh, I was actually a contract worker for a couple months. Cameron, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, way back in the early days. We don't need to get into that story. But I'm happy to see their growth, and I'm excited to learn more about it. So, gentlemen, if you'll welcome, or if you'll come to the stage, help us welcome them. Good morning. Good morning, One Million Cups. Thank you. That's what's great about North Dakota is everybody helps out a little bit. <laughs> it's crazy seeing the growth and, and the people that have been involved throughout it. So I'll get started here with a little video. I think we're going to start to get you guys rolling here. So our mission at New Vision Security is protect the life and property in the communities we serve using powerful technologies for the force of good. My name is Cameron Fleck. Got Mike Weisbeck, our CFO, COO, up here helping out as well to kick these slides back and forth. A little bit more about me is I grew up in a farm in Flasher, North Dakota. Um, if you know where that's at, just south of Mandan. Went to school at Shiloh in high school. Uh, worked at a small two-way radio shop on the west end of Main Street here called Electronic Communications, which really got me into the industry of electronics. Um, I then pursued my AAS degree at Bismarck State, in which I still sit on the advisory board there, and a lot of our great people and great technicians that we're hiring today, uh, four or five of them, a handful, have the AAS degree out of BSC, and it really helps us <clears throat> just get them in and get those standards and training up to date, right, to kick things off. Um, had a short stint at Basin Electric before I had a crazy uh, idea to start a company called Eye of the North Security, uh, with probably one account, two accounts, and growing. Um, I was at a home show here in Bismarck, and I had a local HVAC company owner approach me and say, you know, we've got a uh, business that we've had around for 5, 10, 15 years that is just not getting the love and attention it needs, and I see you out here hustling and working. Um, maybe we could work on a little acquisition deal, and that's what led us into our, our first acquisition. I'll let Mike take a little bit more from here on the company history. 
Absolutely. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for having us. It's a pleasure to get to share a little bit about this great story and the growth that we've, uh, we've been experiencing, and ultimately to hear your feedback on some of the challenges and opportunities we have. So as, as Cameron said, he uh, ended up purchasing a company that had been founded in 1996 by Mike Cambites. Uh, Cameron uh, purchased it in 2015. Uh, the first office uh, before that, I believe it was run out of either out of your home or out of your Yep, out of the garage. Out of the garage, there we go. And so he leased his first office in 2016 down south in Bismarck here. And then uh, in 2017, he added fire alarms and fire protection. Um, in 2018, added sort of a whole new product line, really beefed up the quality um, of the vendors that we began to provide. And then in 2020, uh, did a couple huge growth moves. One was moved into a large shop condo our larger shop condo up by Legacy, and then the second piece was acquired a uh, fire alarm company that had a lot of existing contracts in, in both North Dakota and South Dakota. Yeah, and that helped us spread out a little bit more into different regions in which we can get into next year. So the four big things that we focus on today, so you know what New Vision Security does, is, is key card access. Much like an IT company is managing the computers in a place, we're managing the people coming in and out. We want to know exactly who came in, when they came in, why they were there, and, and so forth. So key card access and visitor management can do just that for your facility, uh, managing all of your visitors in and out. Uh, camera systems, uh, video to see and actually have video proof of who is coming through those doors. Uh, video camera systems nowadays are, are, are really, customers are seeing a return on investment using uh, different types of analytics and uh, uh, things of that nature is to really uh, look into the future and uh, use the technology to, to maybe return some investment back to the company. Um, the third thing is burglar alarms. That would be arming and disarming of the facilities, um, door contacts, glass breaks, motion sensors, uh, and then finally fire alarms, life safety, any, any building out there really has a code to it that says we need pull down handles and, and audio visual devices uh, that need to get pulled in the event that there is a fire and an evacuation is necessary. Uh, we sell an enterprise level system that pulls a lot of this stuff together. So we're looking at one pane of glass uh, to be able to manage your key card access and your cameras and your burglar alarms and, and fire systems in your facilities, making it easy for those IT managers or, or uh, facility managers to to keep an eye on, on what's going on around their facility. So places that those technologies work well and, and vertical markets that we focus on are financial institutions, banks, and credit unions. They've been extremely great to us here in the state of North Dakota with the Bank of North Dakota. We're lucky to have hundreds of small banks, large banks, medium-sized banks, and we've got the opportunity, as much of you guys see them out in the community, uh, so much uh, being out there. It's been a great uh, working with the banks. Of course, education, schools, we do uh, a lot of uh, higher education schools uh, as well as high schools. Flasher, where I come from, we do that. We're working on Killdeer. We've been awarded both Mandan, the new Mandan High School and the new Mandan Middle School projects. So you'll see our vans working and, and rolling around on, on those uh, jobs coming up here soon. Government, the state capital, we have the fire alarm system in that bad boy. Updated that about three years ago. We're pretty proud of that. And um, Attorney General. And the Attorney other General's office. office, yep. And so we do a lot of government. And those are our big three uh, vertical markets that we focus on, as well as healthcare and, and residential. Uh, but being in the state of North Dakota, I say I, I network with a lot of our peers out there. And the guys in Minneapolis and Denver, they could focus on just healthcare and maybe really own that or, or just apartment buildings and really own that. But I always say being up here, we really have to spread out our uh, vertical markets and what we focus on because, you know, we had five apartment buildings going up five years ago and now we haven't seen any. And in the next couple of years here, it looks like we're breaking ground. The building permits are saying, hey, we have more apartment buildings <clears throat> going up here in the next few months. So it's uh, the ebb and flow of that uh, is, is tough, but we t we've got to be able to provide a solution for all markets as well, not just not just one. So, we have uh, experienced a lot of growth. I've been on board a little bit over a year now uh, with New Vision. It's been amazing to see our growth just in the last year. But really, you know, since 2015, when Cam purchased the company, 
Uh, this year, we're projected actually to probably break $3 million in revenue, and so that's a 36% growth over the prior year. And we've been averaging 33% growth the last four to five years. And so an interesting way of looking at it, with that 33%, if you work the numbers back, that's basically we've been doubling every two years um, is, is sort of what we're on pace for. And uh, some of what we'll talk to you about and what's interesting is part of that's through acquisition. And so we're constantly looking at is it better to acquire or is it better for us to internally create uh, some of that value? And that's an interesting, interesting challenge. We've, uh, right now, we're 95% commercial, 5% residential. As Cam said when he first started, it was all residential, and so it's interesting to see how that shifts. Um, but we're very, very proud of the residential we do have, and that oftentimes is the best marketing. That's what's very visible. People are so um, passionate about their homes and take such good care of those that that is really where we get a lot of this great word, word of mouth is when we take good care of the residents. We're up to 16 team members. Uh, about a year ago when I started, we were at about eight, so we've doubled, uh, opened up two more positions this week, and just continuing to grow. Uh, it's so if you know anybody looking, tell them to hop on Indeed, and <coughs> we've got some exciting things going on and some good uh, opportunities for people as well. So And it's it's been amazing. We'll talk a little bit about this in the next growth section, but I've worked with a number of businesses, and when people seek you out, we I, I have a whole file of applications of positions that aren't open yet. People are constantly seeking us out, oftentimes from our competitors, which is what's, what's, a, which is what's incredible. They see our culture, they've met our, our other people, they've seen what we're doing and they want to be a part of it. That's a huge uh, kudos to Cam and the rest of the team. Yeah, in this market, what do you hear time and time again? Can't find people, can't find people. And you hear a lot about the young guys on up here at One Million Cups and saying, culture, 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 and it's, it is just that, um, you, you know, treating your people uh, well, giving them, we've got a lot of young gentlemen working for us that like to camp, so we want to be able to give them their Fridays off and make it work, you know, our customers will understand, and uh, still got to take care of them, but if we're not taking care of the guys we got working for us and the ladies we have working for us, they're not going to be working for us for very long, so... Yeah. Absolutely. It's nice to be able to have a stack of, of resume and, and people calling is, is kind of uh, not typical. So we want to keep running with that and, and grow so we can actually um, bring these people on board as well. So, yeah. Then the last piece is just the number of vehicles we have. Seven of those are service. So we have seven trucks rolling every single day, which is a, not a, definitely not a small operation. Right. Now, today we've got somebody definitely in Williston and that part of the state up in Bowbells area. Um, we'll have somebody in Fargo most likely this week, and we try to right now roll most of our trucks out of the Bismarck area. Kind of brings us into the next slide. <clears throat> we did just start an office in Rapid City, South Dakota. Um, when we acquired SimTech, uh, we had a guy, a sales rep come on board that really developed that area, so that's where we had the most sales happening at. So we had a good amount of growth in, in Rapid City, so we did go ahead and place, uh, place somebody there. He's been with us for about six months. Um, we're looking into getting to Fargo, um, going through the hiring process of that right now. Um, we did just take a job on in Billings, and some of these we can just roll trucks, go out there for a couple weeks and come back. But at the end of the day, a lot of our value within our company is uh, something called, it's, it's RMR really, return uh, revenue on our contracts. So a lot of times we'll be, as contractors, buying these jobs, losing money, God, honestly, by the time we pay commis commissions and everything, we're losing money on, on these projects. But it's really just so that we can get in there and keep the service up and add-ons and different things uh, in the future so somebody can test that fire alarm. Somebody has to monitor that fire alarm. Somebody has to come around and clean the lenses on those cameras, make sure they're working, firmware updates, all those things uh, to manage their services. Uh, that's what we're most interested in and in growing. So what we look at is can we organically grow them through sales team or what's our cost to bring a client on or is it cheaper through acquisitions and there's been some good you know gentlemen in this area where we have had luck with SimTech and New Vision acquiring companies and we're always looking towards that so if you know anybody in the security industry wanting to get out we love those but how we're all looking at other ways of how else can we grow that RMR we have a goal to hit 10 million dollars in RMR a valuation of 10 million in RMR and um, <clears throat> We are in the works uh, this week, really, of purchasing a structured cabling company. And they are the guys that are in there before the security guys, before the IT guys, putting all the cable within the walls. 
So this will help us get on some more of those services early. And potentially, we haven't done anything yet, but maybe it just makes sense to roll it right into IT services and look at managing computers as well, all in the right way and through the right acquisitions, of course. So whatever it takes uh, for us to grow that RMR is what we're, we're looking to do. So both spreading out in the market into Billings, into South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, some of these financial institutions we already work with are in these areas. Starion goes out to Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these guys spread out. A lot of banks in North Dakota like to go to Arizona <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> and so just being able to service their entire territory, and that's what they want, ease of use, one company, and to take care of all their systems for them. So We've mentioned a number of these challenges. Again, challenges, opportunities, you know, growth, large upfront cost. Acquiring companies aren't, uh, aren't exactly cheap. Um, and so that, that, that growth factor, again, the upfront investment, whether it's investing in our own staff to grow things organically or it's acquiring a company, both of those are different strategies. Uh, another one is staffing and retention. Um, Cameron has wisely continued to increase benefits and pay and all those pieces, really staying connected with the staff. Uh, I think one of his most valuable traits as a leader in the company is always asking about the personal side. How are you doing? He knows for me, if my wife's happy, everything's good. <laughs> and so he, he, he realizes, okay, what is it that you need? What, and quickly realized, like he'd mentioned, three-day weekends in the summer, if we only have 12 good weeks of the summer, that's huge for our guys. So let's work four tens, let's work our butts off in the winter, and let's get you those long weekends in the summer. That is invaluable. Our whole staff loves it. Come back Monday ready to work. Uh, extending a high standard of service. This is one of our big competitive advantages, is our standard of service and that local feel. That's what everyone wants. If they install one of our systems, if they sign one of our contracts, they expect us not only to be responsive, but to be kind, to be on the phone, uh, ready and willing to help them when they need it. And so that is, um, as, we are, as we stretch out, depending on, obviously, structured cable. It doesn't quite re require the same amount of service as monitoring someone's residential system. Um, organic growth and acquisitions, that's sort of what we had talked about. So, Cameron, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Otherwise, I think I'd like to open yeah. it up for some questions. Yeah, we just want to ask you guys, you know, after hearing this, where, where are some blind spots? What should we be looking into as we passed around? And it, these are really things that we do struggle with, like growth is a large upfront investment. When we have to add a guy, say, in Fargo, it takes a year to turn these jobs over. So it's a big investment. Um, we've got a lot of people willing to come to work for us, say, hey, I'll do it if you do it, which, which, which is great. So that's what it's all about. We get great people, they take the risk, and, and the future looks great for them as we're growing. So ways to get around that staffing, retention, um, we're open to hearing it all as we're growing and as we're adding people. Uh, we wanna know, uh, I guess, what it takes to, to keep down that successful path. So we'd love to hear your guys' questions. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. I'm gonna advance this out a little bit. What was that? Advance it. Oh, advance it, okay. Yeah. I can do that. Okay. Oh, there it is. That's cool, nice, great. Nice slide. Uh, another round of applause for Cameron and Mike, please. <laughs> awesome. So we've got some time for Q&A. Kayla's going to be our lovely mic runner, so if you have a question for Cameron or Mike, please feel free to raise your hand and she will run that microphone over to you so you can ask it. Um, Thanks for being here, gentlemen. It's been so fun, like I mentioned, to watch your company grow, Cameron. I remember when you were down at that South Space, um, and you've come a long way. So congratulations again. I'm curious, I'm a designer myself, so tell me a little bit about your logo and your color scheme to kick this off. For sure. Yeah, it's an interesting question. We get asked that a lot. <clears throat> when I bought New Vision, uh, really bought the logo and a, and a few contracts, and uh, the guy that I bought it from, it, it was really him, Mike Cambites, his family owns Bismarck Heating and Air. Um, he, I think he's the youngest son of, of theirs. But I believe this is the story I heard, I don't know for sure, but I, I believe it was one of the designers from the University of North Dakota's old logo. And he was buddies with him, and he was starting this company, this was 25 years ago. And uh, it, was, it was one of the local image printings or one of the local print shops that their artist spent a ton of time on it, putting it together for him, and he was a UND fan from what I remember, or there, or there were something like that was going on because you can kind of see that. But it's funny how many people say, even on a nationwide, I'm sitting on an advisory board for uh, the biggest security association in the country, 
And when, when they're talking, they're just like, that is such a cool logo. Where did you guys get that logo? So it's one of those things, even uh, marketing and, and different things, like should we rework it, should we not? It's just one of those logos that's stuck. So we're like, we better, we better keep this around for, <laughs> for now. So people like it. No name change or rebrand like they did at the university, huh? Exactly. No, not, not quite. <laughs> I'm a Bison alum, so I had to throw that thing in there. <laughs> exactly. Question? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, put my city commission hat on for a moment. Um, I will say your logo is probably everywhere. I think everywhere I, I go to in, in Mandan, there's probably uh, not a, a business that I go into that doesn't have your logo up on the door. So I, I will say it's, er it's everywhere I, I go. Awesome. Um, looking at you know potential future you know, projects that might be in the works and, and, and a big topic for not just our community, but nationwide is school safety. You know, in, in Mandan, we, we have two new schools that are going to be going up. You know, we got the high school that is already in the works. You know, the grading is going on. And then we're going to have an, another elementary school that's going to go up in Lakewood that's you know, in the very near term for, uh, for projects. So what have you done with schools? And, you know, has, has there been any opportunity with those type of projects with the school board for you? Well, yeah, good, good question. A lot of people ask, you know, how are our schools in North Dakota? They ask me for that, and I would say pretty good. I do actually feel the money's been there, or there's been grants that have been given. Walking some of the schools, there, there's some small schools out there that could use a replacement, but overall, I feel like the majority of our schools have had the money to get at least key card access in place to lock down the front doors and put uh, a little bit better camera system in uh, if something happens. For instance, even Morton County can now pull right up to the... Uh, a lot of these local schools like New Salem, for instance, and pull some of the video feed up right from their car if they needed to. So they've been working together on some of that. Now, the unfortunate side, when there's a bid job that goes out in the market, like we all know, the lowest bidder wins it no matter what. So the one challenge or issue that I see with the school districts is I would love to see some sort of standardization on, on some sort of product, like the city of Bismarck finally just did it. Um, and uh, you could do it on a state level, the city level, and then the school districts, it'd be nice to see some sort of, uh, in my opinion, standardization on the same product so it's one coherent system that the uh, police department's using all the way through to the school systems. But it seems to be that they're still getting good systems put into the schools, no doubt, because the engineers are doing their job making sure uh, legit contractors are working on it. But unfortunately, a lot of times it's that lowest bid no matter what. So the technology could be could be lacking there. But overall, like I said, the money has been there and the schools are in pretty good shape as far as key card access and, and cameras go. Um, there's been some grants available from the federal level and state level in the past uh, years since we've been running that have been, been able to help them out, procure and get some of that stuff. So yeah, it's overall my, I would say it's good. We are, as I said, working on, we did win the fire alarm system for the Lakewood Elementary School, um, we did lose the cameras and security portion, and we will be working on the cameras at the new high school, Mandan. And so we're procuring all that product to hedge inflation as we speak, even though these projects aren't going to be done for a couple of years. But uh, those are some exciting projects that our, our crews are extremely excited to work on. Thank you. Another question towards the back. Yeah, I noticed on the uh, pictures that you had Missouri Slope up there, and long-term care is a huge different cat than a lot of other facilities because they're going more systematic, um, tying in with their nurse call systems and things. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've always thought of is we lose a lot of equipment in that field where people are taking their walkies or mm -hmm. phones out of the building and they can't track it. And I've often wondered, is there something that you can attach that's really small to those that when they hit those doors at security, you know which ones are going out of the building? And um, because there's limitations to Wi-Fi. I'm on, I've been in another facility where the Wi-Fi goes in and out and we can't get our charting done because it's all one, all in one system with the security and the phones and everything. So just food for thought right. more than a question is, is that's one area they're lo literally losing I don't know, anywhere from ten to $20,000 a year with equipment going out the door and not coming back in. Small equipment like cell phones maybe. Well, or the walkie-talkies that are in the $100 a piece mm -hmm. that are older um, electronics, and then the new cell phones or iPads. Gotcha. 
So a lot of the stuff nowadays has some sort of tracking uh, ability to, abilities on it like that, but um, um, internal theft is, is, is common where there's internal things happening. The, the best thing that we do for a lot of that is it's not going to work in a healthcare facility per se, but a lot of things that run in a point of sale system, we can integrate with their point of sale system so you can see all the video footage that's around that Snicker bar. Maybe we lost 20 Snicker bars this last year. I want to see all the video footage around the Snicker bar that got rang up. So we can do that just like a bank uh, for fraud. If, if we need to look up video footage around a transaction number, we can see that and, and get to the bottom of it quick. But uh, theft of uh, small devices like that is, is, a tough one to, is a tough one to get by if they're stealing walkie-talkies, unless there's good video footage of seeing them and where they're getting taken. You know, where we house these walkie-talkies, there should be a camera, and then, of course, the doors so we could see if they're, they're leaving with them. But some of those are tough, tough to get, get over everything and get it all uh, caught. So, yeah. Hey, fellas. Hey, Jake. Jake. So a question for you with Rapid City going into that new market. You know, you got your name recognition here. Your, your growth's all been essentially here, right? How do you truly establish yourself in that kind of market? How do you get into there? How do you establish yourself? I know you got one tech down there now, yep. but what's what's next? Yeah, that's a great question, and that's a question I'd urge for you guys to help us out with if anybody's ever spread out into other territories. But that's exactly what we're looking at. Let's let's hop into Rapid City. Let's hop into Billings and 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 learn these hard lessons of how do we bring that local feel like we have in Bismarck, where people see our name on our doors and see our name everywhere. How do we bring that to Rapid City and Fargo? Um, so that they can see that and and really what we're doing currently is we're we're purchasing a property we're gonna we've joined the chamber we've done all the things that we did in Bismarck really get boots on the ground get a van there that's logoed up find a spot have a grand opening get an ice cream truck there <laughs> all the stuff and just look at our vertical markets that have gotten us to where we are like the financial institutions and the education systems and really storage unit facilities Things like that. There's a lot of uh, networking that we can do ju by just talking to those vertical markets that we've had success with, and, and starting there to just get get jobs going and really get ingrained within that community. It's one thing that we want to continue down the road. It's one of our core values uh, in our mission statement. Is we want to, you know, to the communities we serve. So if we're in Rapid City, we would definitely want to put our staple there. Be part of the chamber. Be part of the organizations. The downtown. I, I need to look if they've got any sort of one million cups type thing in Rapid City. I know Fargo does, but mm -hmm. those things is something that I want to be involved with, and it's it's been great, really. They've been giving us referrals and giving us some emails so far, um, but just spending time in those communities is is our plan to grow and putting boots on the ground there to get people talking about us. Some other things to keep in mind is there's business resources all across the country yeah. similar to Bismarck, so you should be able to find... Um, small business development centers, women's business centers, that kind of thing, yeah. to help you further mm -hmm. um, get connected in those communities. So keep that in yeah, mind. Yeah, we'll talk looking. on that. Yeah, <laughs> great. Good. Question over here. Um, switching gears to residential, what would the, how would you sell a residential system when somebody can just get a couple of wise cams, a ring doorbell? Mm -hmm. What's the benefit of having a company like you implementing it as opposed to a homeowner? just buying some things from Amazon and setting them up themselves? Great. Yeah, great question. We get asked that a lot. It's been a thorn in the guys' side, the pro dealers, we call them, around the country for sure. Um, the younger generation that's willing and able to do that, they, they really like that. There's still a lot of people that are like, hey, just put this app in my hand and show me how it works. So we are there for that. Furthermore, a true pro security install and uh, monitoring is, is done a little bit, bit different. Like. For instance, a lot of the ring.com and stuff is, is just ran through your Wi-Fi in your home. Well, if you're, in, as you know, someone mentioned it already, my Wi-Fi goes in and out, doesn't work all the time. Everything's reliant on that. So if you have a low temperature in your house or, or a flood or, God forbid, a burglary, you're relying on that you know, Wi-Fi infrastructure where we have 4G LTE backups in place to really, we have daily checks with the system to make sure it's communicating. If there's something down, you know, we're proactive in calling you to make sure we're getting your batteries replaced and, and getting out to fix your stuff. So there's definitely a benefit with that. But I was just in a conversation actually this morning. A buddy texted me and said, hey, I need a couple cameras on my house. What would you recommend? And just one on the driveway. And we, we're to the point now where we'll only put a hardwired camera in. A lot of the wireless stuff isn't working well. Um, 
where we're just like, you know, you can go buy that at Best Buy, you could buy that at Verizon or, or Amazon. Try that. If it's good enough for you, that's great. And 90% of the time it is. Even for me, it probably would be. I just want to see who's coming and going from my driveway. But for us to put a reliable system in and know that we can stand behind it, we do some things different on the install that makes sure that we don't have to roll that truck over there because it costs us 125 bucks no matter what for a guy to leave the shop, get on the interstate, drive, get parked, all that stuff. It's, it's mighty expensive. So we want to eliminate truck rolls as much as possible. So back to really just being a, a pro install and putting it in that way, it is a little bit more expensive, but it's done the right way, and uh, you can trust that it's just going to work. And if you need service, you can call and get a local person, not a 1-800 number, waiting on hold, all that stuff. So we're having a lot of people like the Vivints of the world and the ADTs of the world. We do the same exact thing, that pro install, except local service. So a lot of the same technology there that people love, and they can see their video doorbells, arm and disarm their home, adjust their thermostats, unlock and lock their doors, turn their lights on and off. They like that technology, but they would like somebody to call locally uh, to fix it or if something goes wrong. So that's where we win on a lot of residential stuff. Yeah, great question. But, do you have anything to add? I would just add just a couple of small things. One, I've noticed the quality because the quality of we don't we we've, we've gotten away from a lot of those big box retail type cameras. Everything we sell is is basically through major manufacturers who are constantly innovating. So definitely the quality, the clarity of the picture, you can see that, but also the apps and the tools that you can use. A lot of these cameras, if you just want to see what's happening live, yeah, there's not a huge difference. But when something actually happens, that's where I've seen people come in. Boom, the, you know, a, lot of our, a lot of the apps will even just say, okay, it'll highlight just in green over the last three days. Here's where there is motion. Here's, so the, 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 the ability to go back and review the footage actually makes something meaningful out of it um, is a huge benefit of a, of a higher quality system. Just this week we had one, and it's, it's, we hear it a lot where they call, and it's unfortunate because we don't want to hear the bad stories, but we get plugged in the middle of it. But uh, Mandan on the Strip uh, location just this week called and said, hey, we got our trailer st stolen. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, no, don't worry. It's okay, because I know we got them. <laughs> I know we got them. Our camera is right there. We watched this truck back up. I showed the police. They already know who it is. I just need your help getting it onto a USB stick for me. <laughs> and if, that's what I hear time and time again, where it's like this joy of, oh, don't worry. It did exactly what we needed it to do. Um, and that happens <clears throat> time and time again, but we want to make sure we get the right shot, the camera's mounted the right way, and ask the questions when we're coming into these facilities um, so that we know where they're parking their expensive stuff and, and, and we can catch them if they do, so. Good question, Johnny. Uh, since we're talking the technology, um, and you had mentioned firmware upgrades, can you talk a little bit about, so I think te is technology still changing and advancing very rapidly in your space? And so if someone does do a big install, how many years are they looking at before they may have to change that out? Or are things really such that firmware updates and that sort of thing can bring, bring it up you know, without having to change out a whole system? Sure, that's, that's a great question as well. Um, it, it used to be definitely where we would see probably five years is what a lot of people are saying in this industry and, and computers and everywhere. It's like that we need to start budgeting every five years to probably replace it because the cameras are getting old or, or the firmware isn't available to get updated. But now with a lot of, a lot of things pushing to the cloud and the w just the way they're doing things with automatic updates, we call it the, the overall cost of ownership, is expected to be eight to 10 years with a lot of this stuff because it used to be the clarity was changing just like your TVs, the cameras, it's, it, the clarity was changing. But now we're at 4K, 8K, how much clear, clear, clear can we get? So, so what's getting changing is people counting. So video analytics, putting boxes around things and telling me if it's a UPS truck or if it's a human or if it's a motorcycle um, or whatever it is. And a lot of those are just software changes. So we can upload and add these to their systems as they grow uh, through the times. So what we're telling people is we're seeing five-year warranties on all of our stuff now right out of the box. So we can guarantee you five years. But I'm saying the overall cost of ownership is probably more like eight to 10 years with the new stuff if you're putting it in and putting it in the right way. We've seen a lot of stuff out there that's been put in for three years and it's just rip and replace. It's just the cheap stuff that was probably sold in a box online that's already maybe five to eight years old. So they're selling it at a discount rate, people put it in. So we rip a lot of stuff out that's been there for three years, but if done the right way and it's the new technology, 
Uh, I think the overall cost of ownership is actually less, right, and, and longer because of the, what they've done for the updates and things with the new, the new models. So, yeah. So the company that I work for does mineral extraction in the Bakken, and one of the things that we've implemented over the last few years in order to optimize our operator's efficiency is go to an operation by exception kind of model where our employees don't have to go to each location each and every day because it's a tedious task and the Bakken is a large region. Have you guys looked at industrial uses for your equipment so that you know those companies out there can can do remote monitoring of those locations and maximize employee mm -hmm. um, movement and, and time? Sure. We've been, the oil field, as you know, is up and down. And so seven years ago, I bought this company. So the last five years has been down. But it's, I'm getting a lot more calls. I remember when I was first starting it about seven years ago, when things were still going on out there, we did work with a lot of oil field companies. And I'm starting to get them to call me. I'm looking at my phone going, oh, what, what the heck's going on? And asking questions and stuff. So yes, we do that. Gate entries. We have license plates. Can't we read your license plate? Automatically open the gate. We work with a lot of these electric co-ops and stuff. Um, so yes, we do just that. But it's been a tough market for, for me to tap out west as as a matter of fact, I don't know if it's getting the right salesperson working out there, but I've been sitting down with some safety guys I have and whatnot and trying to work through the realm of things out there, but just hasn't been a huge market, honestly, for us to tap quite yet. We do a lot of banks in Williston and Watford City and get out there quite a bit, but getting out on those well sites um, hasn't been big yet, but I do feel something coming. So with that, I have a system at my shop that's completely solar, completely wireless, goes off Verizon, it's going to cost about 250 bucks a month to host. So that's the Verizon charges and the cloud storage and everything. And we can launch cameras out on your well pad completely wireless. You don't even need power. And you can be able to monitor through video analytics and, and vehicle counting, see how many people were on there, heat mapping to see where people were hanging out on that well pad and where they weren't. Or if an explosion happens, send an analytic because there's a fire. There's a lot of things that, that they can do and the technology is there. But uh, just haven't got a lot of calls on it. Uh, quite yet, so good question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know you guys talked a little bit about like you know the trailer getting stolen from that dealership and stuff. Do you guys do any like uh, fleet or asset tracking type of devices yet? No, we have our burglar alarm system has a, a little tile that you can stick on, say your two-way radios or, or whatever you need, and if it leaves the site my alarm panel will start beeping and notify people and say, hey, this device has left the site. That's about as far as we go because we're not doing any GPS type tracking or, or anything like that. It's just, if you have an asset that's worth $100,000 sitting here, a vase or something, we can stick a little tile on there to let you know if that thing left the site. Say, Sitting Bull's headdress down at Sitting Bull College. We do that there on that box that it sits in, so. Okay, um, when you first started, you uh, focused on agriculture. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you still do? Yeah, good question as well. We do a fair amount of farms and ranches in the calving barn season, I guess, uh, calving season, so especially locally. Um, still a lot of those guys buying them online, setting them up themselves, which I love to see, because you can save a lot of time and a lot of headaches and a lot of sleep. Um, but a lot of the large farmers and ranchers around the area, yeah, we've got PTZs up on their grain bins and all over their farmyards, and uh, they, they're able to check in on their cell phones or while they're away in Arizona or whatever that might be to see exactly what's going on. And it's such a great industry to be in. I grew up on a farm, so my dad can attest to, like, our neighbor would rake their yard every, I'd tell this story, every, like, every day just to see if somebody came into their yard. So there's better ways to do that now. I'm just saying, <laughs> put a camera up and... <laughs> Um, our family could have used some better cameras here a couple weeks ago. We suffered oh, the great chicken massacre of 2022. Uh -oh. So, oh, no. and we couldn't go back and review the footage because they'd purchased an online oh, no. box <laughs> camera system. Shoot. We're still mourning the loss. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. What what percentage of your business is currently coming from just re responding to RFQ type work versus? somebody calling you uh, based on word of mouth, based on previous work, that sort of thing? Yeah, that's a good question. We've, two years ago, it was all word of mouth, it seems like, but 
since I bought SimTech, we've gotten into this bid spec work where we're bidding a lot to electrical engineers. So we've got maybe 50, 60 more projects on the board that were bid work that weren't due to any relationships, but we're probably still 50-50. We like the relationship ones much better. I like to just communicate. We don't like, on, nobody likes selling on price. You know, we, have a, we have a product that we know can fit the needs and, and work well but sometimes it, it's not always competing on price. So I'd say in this market 50-50, in Rapid City, it's a 100% bid market. We don't have anybody calling us yet, mm -hmm. saying, and that's what we're trying to get over that hump because, it, number one, it's better, more profitable work, and, and uh, you know, number two, we like having those relationships with people and, and growing that way. So that's something we're trying to find in these other markets, Fargo as well. Um, we've had a lot of success here in Bismarck, but um, getting more word of mouth in those other markets has been tough. Here it's been great. The phone rings a lot. And just people asking, hey, I hear you do this, I hear you do that. So a lot of leads coming in, but it's tough in those other markets. If we can find a way to get more local local people calling that, that'd be better. So 50-50 is the answer I'd give you. Got to find yourself a local champion. I know, mm -hmm. right? They're hard. Uh, we call them rainmakers, right? Yeah. Anybody <laughs> read the book Rainmaker? It's a good book. <laughs> Hi. Not trying to harass you, just genuinely curious <laughs> about a lot of things. No problem. A good question. Um, I actually have two questions that are kind of related. I have heard that the appearance of security systems d goes a long way in just preventing crime at all, that having a sticker on your door that says you're protected or something that isn't even an active camera but looks like one does a lot. So I'm curious if you find that's true. Uh, and then my second question is how much of what you do results in recovered goods? You know, does just having a good video of somebody stealing something really result in that truck getting back, you know, mm. that walkie-talkie getting returned. I yeah. am a happy member of Bismarck People Reporting News, and it <laughs> seems like everyone has videos of stuff getting stolen off yeah. their porch, but nobody ever really, and I don't know if they just don't report back, but no one ever says, oh, because we had this video, we got our son's bike back, or for sure, I don't know. Yeah, I... To answer your first question, I think putting signage up definitely helps, absolutely. It deters people. The people that are doing this aren't necessarily the smartest individuals, so they will just, oh, they've got a yard sign, I'm going the other way, and you know they're maybe whacked out of their mind and just moving on or whatever that means. So we see all kinds, but that does help. I'd still say having a burglar alarm and some video evidence, is, it's not going to prevent it totally. A burglar alarm is always the best. We can get di if, if we know something happened within five or ten minutes, and the police department does, it's all about how quickly we get notified. So even video, you might not know for two weeks because you look back, oh, I'm missing this. Well, now that guy's two weeks away, potentially. So burglar alarm's getting broken into. Signage helps, yes, but I would always have that. That's the second question is something that the nas national companies are all talking about of how do we get over this for our customers. And, and the true problem is, is we are finding the people oftentimes. They do know who they are. They're in and out of jail so much and it's that they're not happening Nothing's happening in the court system, really. They're getting right back out. So we'll talk to, we've got a lot of businesses on the strip, per se, and we'll talk to a lot of those business owners where they say, you know, we caught them red-handed, we know exactly who the guy is, but we just, nothing ever happens. They just get back in and back out. So I think there's a deeper issue of that, but we definitely see us preventing crimes and capturing crimes all the time, where <clears throat> if it's something major that happened, we've had a couple murder cases. Of course, there's been one on the Strip. There's been a house that burnt down here in Bismarck, both in which we've been called into and in, in all of those situations. And if they didn't have video footage on both of those cases, I don't know if any of those cases would have got cracked. So it's all about the video footage in a lot of those um, cases. And that gives us a lot of pride and, and different things when we're seeing crimes and stuff get captured just because of our cameras we might have put up or, or something like that. So. Yes, they are, at the end of the day, finding out who they are, if they're the kids that are just out there being porch pirates and just being dumb, like I probably was back in the day, <laughs> or if they're actually people uh, going in to steal catalytic converters or, or what have you. They are catching them a lot of times. I, I can't give you a percentage, but I know it's over 50% of the time where they're coming back saying, we did catch them. It's just, did anything happen once they did catch them? So. Speaking of your childhood, this better be a really yeah. good, embarrassing <laughs> story. <laughs> Take the sister the has away. the microphone. Shoot, I don't have any really good <laughs> stories. I should have thought harder on that one. Yeah. No, how do you to stay on top of industry trends with everything changing so quickly with technology? Sure. We rely on our manufacturer reps a lot for that. I tell people, we don't make the technology, and that's 
so if it's uh, something's not working, our firmware update, we'll be there to update it as soon as we can. We sell, we truly believe some of the best technologies out there, the biggest Johnson Controls of the world, uh, big companies are selling same product. Um, so we lean on them. So tonight at three o'clock, my camera rep is coming to Bismarck and we're all going out on the pontoons at three, from three to six and that's where we're gonna get our take of the new camera product and all that stuff. I'm sure he's got all sorts of new releases and things that he's gonna tell us about. So, so just staying close to those manufacturer reps and making sure they've got my cell phone number. They're the ones that tell me where the acquisitions are too a lot of times. They're the ones that help us out a ton. Um, learning new, new product and then going to those industry events down in Las Vegas and uh, uh, this last year here was in Texas but um, visiting the manufacturer's booth and just listening to them and understanding them and, and, and um, implementing the new technology that, that comes along. So it's moving fast like all technology is but when you're in it every day it's not that hard to keep up on honestly for us. It's, it's still pretty slow moving for me but to the end user it's like wow new technology all the time. For us, it's pretty easy to, pretty easy to keep up with. So, and I would just add a little bit. Also, a lot of our staff. Yeah, that's the great part about hiring. And a lot of these we've gotten from BSC, and so we absolutely love. That they just have phenomenal programs. BSC and our competitors. So we get a lot of our employees. Um, don't poach them. They just come to us. But uh, they're just they're passionate about the industry, and so sometimes they'll bring stuff to us. Gabe, and uh, Gabe's been with me for since the beginning. Got a, he was a 4.0 student at BSC, so I was like, wow, he's smart. He needs to work with me. <laughs> Still there. He's good. But he's the guy that's on all the blogs and beating everybody up. And he brought, came to me one day, that was probably five years ago. He's like, if we're going to be a Honeywell shop the rest of our life, I don't know if I want to work here. And so, you know, I'm busy trying to grow a business and everything. I'm like, well, you just let me know what technology you want to bring in here um, and, and let's do it. And so we made some major shifts, like the timeline said, 2018, back there, yeah. To <coughs> bring new technology in and we're still managing some of that old Honeywell stuff and it kind of stinks but uh, um, still good stuff it just sucks that we have to manage it right we've brought in and more enterprise level stuff we got told no by DMP one of our banking brands three times until we ripped their panels out of enough banks they came back and said oh, okay fine you know because it's hard to hit the numbers that they're wanting us to hit for some of these big big brands that we're selling but now we're in with all of them we're doing well we're, we're crushing our numbers with them and they're really happy with our growth and stuff so it's all good but Yes, our employees doing some research and having those hard conversations was definitely a big reason why we have the great technology now that we have in-house. So it, it was worrisome. It was expensive, but now that we sell so much of it, we can give you the same expensive product for the, about the same price, but it's going to last you that five to eight years like it should rather than three years. So. Before we get into our last question, I'm curious, is there a job that you've done that you are most proud of when you've said, like, oh, we finally made it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's every day is a risk. You know, you're still fake until you make it, so I'm really good at that. <laughs> so I'm still faking it. But it just, you know, we've hired a lot of friends and different things right away. It didn't work out so well for me. Um, we've got a great team now. Um, just trusting people to <coughs> do their job better and letting them own it has been great. And bringing, bringing Mike on to help out with the operations has been really nice because what I like to do is business development and grow and acquisitions and that type of stuff. So sometimes... Uh, you know, I love people and everything, but sitting down and having conversations are just, it's tough for me. So Mike does, does an awesome job of that of, with the people and being there and bringing stability and, and all that stuff that can help us potentially grow. So I still don't feel that, oh, we've made it, honestly, yet. We've got a long way to go. But um, I kind of keep my fingers crossed, just like, man, I can't, this just keeps going on. <laughs> so it's going good. <laughs> well, thank you. Hey, gentlemen, will you click on the presentation, please, so I can advance the slide? Thank you. Kayla, do you want to take us home with our last question? I certainly will. Okay, we ask the same last question every time, but first, when I was in college, I worked at Hallmark, and we had the Precious Moments Bandit. You know, those, like, <laughs> depressed pastel figurines. Somebody was stealing them like crazy. So management just put up little signs that said, cameras are watching. Nice. But it was clear we had no cameras. <laughs> there you go. See, it does work. Yeah, so... <laughs> Hopefully, with systems like you, we will someday apprehend the Precious Moments Bandit. Still, at <laughs> <laughs> but we like to ask the same question every week: What can we do as the Bizman community to help you succeed? Yeah, well, just keep talking good about us, right? I don't ask for anybody to please do business with us. It's just say good things about New Vision. Uh, know that we're trying to help the community. We're doing community stuff. We did a denim for donuts day, and we raised enough denim jeans for the whole. Uh, um, less fortunate community in Bismarck last year, and we're always trying to do stuff like that to 
help the great community. So just talk about us, let them know what we're doing, and and uh, say good things. And if, if there's anything that we can do to help protect or secure anything that you guys have or, or need, we'd love to consult with you on that. So, well, I would just also say uh, the the feedback, even like the gentleman who you know the the questions either about. Um, the assisted living center or about the oil patch. I mean, I'd love to have a conversation with both of you out there to see what your ideas are. What are your thoughts? How, who should we be talking to to find answers, to find solutions? Because clearly there's an opportunity there. What can we do to help solve that? And that's the same thing. When we, we try taking the approach, we aren't trying to fix someone's problem. We're trying to help understand their concern. And very often when they call in for a tech support question, Fixing their camera or getting it back up online, that's not even the real question. That's not even their real concern. So listening enough to figure out what that is underneath that. And so like Cameron had said in our mission, it's not just about providing security. It's about protecting this community, these places we love. So we love the feedback and the collaboration. Cam is huge on partnerships. And so that's what we see this community as, as a partner as we're continuing to help. That's right. Yeah, thank you. Give them another hand. Thank you guys so much. Sit down. Uh -oh. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Don't get hasty. I can't sit this long. She's <laughs> Louise. <my> mom. <laughs> okay. We've got a full schedule coming up. You can see it behind me um, next week. We've got, uh, I think it says Cornerstone Consulting over there. Um, the following week, we've got a breakfast scheduled. So we'll be at First Western Bank uh, just a few blocks away in their um, 360 space on the rooftop. By the Batch is going to be providing breakfast. So join us there for some networking and some conversation. And then uh, Spark Group will be joining us uh, the week after that. So uh, look forward to seeing you down the road. If you are interested in presenting or know someone who is, uh, go to the link you see up there behind me. It's a really simple process and we're happy to have you on stage. So with that, thank you everybody for attending One Million Cups. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Oh, take this off.